Hello everyone, this is Deriz Beşer, as the founder and the director of uh, Fanzines Viana Art and Zin Fair. I would like to welcome you to this talk. In this evening, Frida Hammer will be our guest artist. So I would like to give some small introduction about her. And Frida Hammer is an illustrator, animator and comics artist from Sweden. For her visual expression has a much stronger impact than just textual communication. And now I would like to show some of works from her Instagram account and also please follow her Instagram account instagram.com slash Frida underscore Hammer. So let's check out her works. I would like to show this work first. There is one of cyanotype print that she folded into an accordion. And also she filled with a short poem, Invisible Forces Leaves Visible Marks. And also this one. If you want to see more works about Frida Hammer, please visit her Instagram account. So Instagram.com slash Frida underscore Hammer. And now I would like to invite her to our live broadcast. Oh, Frida, Hi. how are Hello. you? Oh, it's fine. nice Thanks to see you. Nice introduction. <laughs> Nice to see you too. Been writing to each other. So I was trying to, yeah. uh, I was denied. Yeah, sorry, I didn't wait. I didn't have the energy to wait. I was just, yes, I want to go home. So. But we are lucky, actually. There wasn't any technical issue about connection, et cetera, et cetera. So we could find easily each other on the Instagram. Yes. We are lucky. Very lucky. Cool, so how are you? Nice introduction. Yeah, Thank I'm you. fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. If you want to, let's start to talk about you. So okay. would you like to <laughs> introduce yourself for the persons who don't know you? Yeah, yes, of course. Yes, my name is Frida. I see some people I know coming in, uh, some artist friends. I see some name from Instagram. Great. Hello. To, yeah. And some I don't Hello, know. Hello, everyone. Yeah. Well, you said it very nice introduction. I'm an illustrator. I have a bachelor degree in animation, actually. So first I went to art school and then I did uh, my um, like university study uh, in animation, classic animation. And after that, I kind of just freelanced and I also work as an art teacher, teaching kids and uh, design students and art students, arts and design. So, yeah, and I all I always been drawn to storytelling, some kind of story driven artwork, uh, and mm, I always made kind of sketchbooks, and trying to explore the um, format of the book, and what to put in it, uh, just um, pictures and words, and play with that. So, um, yeah. So that's how I got into comics and scenes and making fun scenes. When yeah, you were 25 years old, you, you went to art school. But yeah. before that period, how was uh, your re relationship with illustration and art? Well, uh, so when I was a small girl, like growing up, uh, I, I, did, I had a diary. Like I, I, I never really wrote, I just made pictures, like a sketchbook. Uh, so oh, I yeah. went through diaries like many of them. <laughs> I made my own. Visual diary. Yeah. Uh, but I didn't think of it as, as writing down. I just wrote, kind of drew something that happened that day or something I saw or something. So I've always been 
interesting in drawing, and I made my friends draw with me. Uh, like I put on a big uh, paper, and they had to like uh, draw with me. <laughs> so, but they liked it. I hope they liked it. <laughs> so this is the it's a great then. format. Yeah, yeah, and it's a great way to um, stay. Like you can when you talk, if you if your hands are moving and you talk, it's a different kind of conversation. It's like when you're walking and having a conversation. You talk, uh, you relax your brain in some way because you let your hand move and it's now, it doesn't get awkward if it's silent a lot. And then just some, yeah. someone says something and I just like it, that way to kind of have a conversation. So, and I always enjoyed it. So, since I was a kid. So, and I, um, but then I had some, I went to university, I had some studies and, uh, and I went to Spain. I saw you had your art studies in Sevilla, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, but uh, so when I was in Spain, I thought maybe I should uh, like focus. Uh, so I applied for this art school. So I went two years uh, for art school and then that's when I got into comics. So I applied to this um, animation school after that, so. Yeah, sounds great. Sounds great. Yeah. And when did you meet with that zines, or do you remember the first zine that you bought? Well, it's it's um, so I got uh, I made some comics, and I got published in a like a collaboration scene, <laughs> uh, for a, or more like a magazine I would say, of fan scene. It's more commercial. Galago, it's a, a publisher here in Sweden. So I got included, oh, yeah. and that's how I uh, kind of got into uh, collaborations, you know, when you get many artists doing some small stuff and make it into a magazine or a fancy. So, uh, and then um, that's kind of what I first uh, got to, like, read comics in, in that way. And not this glossy, you know, magazine papers are very nice produced and it's like just this artist making art some of them without words some just words and just mix of everything and it was so uh, nice i was so kind of felt like the right community for me to be and people were what i like about scenes is that you focus maybe on one subject uh, it's a it's a room a little book just can i i like a, this uh, mushroom book is this uh, subject. You just talk about something. Yeah, I have seen this one on, yeah. on your page. It's, yeah. It looks pretty cool. Yeah, it's like collage. And I just focused on, uh, yeah. you know, I, I read everything I could about mushrooms and uh, kind of tried Ooh. to, yeah, <laughs> and put it down. And then uh, scenes are a great way to like read poems. So some sometimes I think, um, poetry should be in a scene form instead of a uh, traditional book structure. I think it's, it gets more space uh, not to like have many poems after each other, just one book for one poem. It's, it deserves yeah, more I space, like that structure. So I read some poems and, and, and poetry and then, yeah, so this is when I do poetry or just put words together. Yeah, I like to do a smaller scene. So, and maybe. So this is really from, you know, I went to a secondhand store or flea market. So this is a real book that I just tore out uh, papers and kind of, I did this pop-up, just glued stuff. It's just only one copy, right? Yeah, it's only one copy. So this is more like an artist. Or you, you were just making more. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. an artist book, it's only one edition. Book. Yeah, and so and the, many of my are, and this is also, this is uh, the one I showed you before. It's a tear, you know, the book structure, it's kind of like in the back, there are many sections. So I tore off. Ah, yeah, I so see that binding. Yeah, the binding. So I tore off one section and I made this, uh, and this is uh, about the English one. Uh, it's, uh, you know, in the... Um, when uh, people moved into the city to London to work in factories. So this is about yeah. the people who were living in, in the 
uh, like having cows and stuff or sheep and moved into the city to kind of work in uh, the industry. So this is, uh, and I grew up in a place where we had like a factory. Uh, so this is kind of a memory from when I was young. Oh, ah, well. Yeah, growing up there, so. Yeah, that's great. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so, yeah. From comics, you got into animation and you had a bachelor degree in a classic animation. Yep. So how, how was uh, that transition for you? Well, uh, have you done some animation? Have you ever been trying? I just tried some basic animations. Yeah. It's just yeah. beginner's style, let's say. Uh, well, I didn't, I didn't animate much before I went to this university. And if I knew how much, how time consuming it was to do classic animation, I don't know if I, uh, I don't know if I would have gone to that school. And, and uh, when I like applied in the interview, they were like, oh, you work so fast. This is great. It's going to be great for you. You're, you're perfect for this because I have uh, kind of, I work fast. Uh, and I showed, like when I showed my artwork, I showed them kind of my sketchbooks and then say, oh, for how long do yeah. you, how long do you spend on, uh, on a sketchbook? And I say, well, uh, it depends, but uh, a week, a month, depending on how big the sketchbook. And I say, yeah, okay, you're in. <laughs> uh, you need kind of have a certain mm, flow. Uh, and I loved it in the beginning, but it's the, my arm did not agree well with uh, working like that a lot. And then you're on the computer and then you're drawing. And then for my, you know, my hobbies are drawing. So then I go back and I do my <laughs> drawing. So it's uh, hard for the body. Uh, and, but I still do it, I still like it, but it's depending on the story I want to tell. So if it uh, helps to have some animation, uh, I, I, do, I do it in like, uh, an animated film, short animated film. Uh, if it's not necessary, I stay with words and images. So depending on what I want to tell, I try to mm, choose the technique uh, from that. So I don't know if this is yeah, strange, but I mean, it's some stories uh, are better um, if you spend two hours on, because that's what they, and kind of put them in a nice scene or something. And some stories, yeah, maybe right. you have to spend three years uh, to kind of develop. And it depends on what you want to say, I guess. So, or for yeah, me, right. yeah. So that's why I like scenes and fan scenes. That's, it's the format that where you can work long, but it's um, the, um, I like it because it's like available. You can approach it. It feels like, oh, this is not too, it's not, oh, don't touch it, don't, it's too much, it's too arty or something. You just, okay, I can, this, this is kind of, I can read this, this is mine, uh, so. Actually, there is lots of mutual point between comics and animation. So that's why, as I understood, there wasn't a complicated transition for you at all. No, 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 and, and as I said, I applied to, to the, the school with my comic, uh, with the work I did with comics, so. And I always, even I did story driven artwork, even if it wasn't like you showed this one, this is not, this is just the um, collage that you showed in the beginning. Uh, this is yeah, really well. just one long piece of paper with collages. And as you said, uh, uh, and this is, I don't know, this is a scene, I guess. So, and this is kind of, you know, I didn't really think that this, that will be a story. But if you follow it, you can, when it's done, it's like, okay, that's a house. And you, you're, everybody wants to kind of put things together, I guess. So, and while I'm working, uh, this wasn't, I hadn't planned anything, but my brain works like, oh, maybe this could visit that house. And maybe we can put a row there and they'd be neighbors. And maybe they drink tea when they get together or wine. Uh, so, yeah, why not? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so this is just, how my brain works. I want to make a story out. I, it's meaningful for me to make a story out of it. So, so that I didn't plan. While this, I wrote before I started. So I had all the text 
but I didn't have the. Also, it's part part of the exhibition on yeah. fanzines, yeah. right? Yes. Yeah, is. I remember. So this part. is different. This I spent some time writing first. I did the writing first, and then I kind of did the book, and I more spent more time on the book structure, how I wanted it to feel, and I wanted this thick paper, so. So I just spend time more glue. I would spend more time gluing it together and pressing it down than yeah. I did like working on the words and, and the images. So it's uh, about when what kind of story you want to tell and what you like uh, inspired to work with, I guess. So yeah, sure, sure. Generally, so, how how many copies uh, do you produce about your zines or well, art books I, or artist books? Uh, so I have another account I told you about, like uh, the Avnal now. That's more a comic uh, structure. So then, then I make a fun scene and I sell it for, you know, I just, uh, I sell it like the best of. Uh, so that, then I can do yeah. many copies because I do one every Friday. And then I kind of choose maybe 20 that I think it's have some value <laughs> because not every, every week has a value. I just, in that, that you want to buy something. But so because it's for the book structure then. Yeah, unique edition that you made. Yeah, so this I consider an artist book. That's just one copy. Uh, you just produce every week some new works. So sounds like a marathon a bit for me. <laughs> like I said, maybe this is my tempo. This is how I work. So sometimes, like I told you about uh, in for two years ago, every month I did one a uh, scene or a uh, fan scene or an uh, artist book. So this was just because I wanted some concrete in the end of that year to, uh, like I want 12 artist books. Uh, and I didn't really decide, uh, like it could be a short poem to a longer story. Uh, well, isn't life a marathon? <laughs> you just go on and see what happens. I don't know, I don't have any kind of, uh, tomorrow I'm done or, you know. In my opinion, this type of uh, production disciplines always bring some good results and yeah. success. So that's why it's a great practice for you. But I think it's also good for the mental health to think that uh, I do this for 10 minutes a day. Maybe I'll do something better tomorrow. Because if you sit down and you think, uh, in, on Friday I will uh, pull, pull my pains out, I will have uh, two hours and I will create and it's going to be a masterpiece. and I don't know, I, I, it's more men mental uh, health for me to sit down like 10 or 15, 20 minutes a day and don't have that pressure that it has to be something really, really amazing. Because it's, it takes, uh, I don't know, we are all different. Some really likes to like get a week, a month and then just work uh, every like night and day. I'm not like that. I feel too much pressure. So the only thing I know <laughs> is, you know, if you, if you want to start run, a run or something, you have to like run every day or maybe every each day, small amount, and then maybe you can run for a longer time when you're ready. And, and the same goes, you know, uh, as a freelancer, if I, get, uh, if I get commission, I like to be prepared. So I don't like have to say to, my client that just wait, I need two days to warm up. <laughs> you know, it's not possible. I have to be ready. And, it, uh, and yeah. uh, if I had too long of breaks, uh, I kind of need time to warm up and I don't know, loosen up. Men I think it's just for the health. It's easier for me. Yeah, right. And I think uh, everybody likes to create in some way, if it's cooking or if it's writing or drawing or making, I don't know, dancing or anything. Just, uh, I think people um, need to uh, create to be, uh, to feel like a, like a nice, you know, it's a, you need to eat, sleep and drink and have maybe draw something or make something. It's what we do. So, and don't, yeah. don't feel too much pressure about it. Just do it. <laughs> I, I think. Right. Yeah. I agree with you. Good. I agree with you. <laughs> By the way, um, you also work as an art teacher. So how, how is that going on? 
Uh, do you have some na naughty students in your class? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I work as a part-time uh, art teacher and I teach, I also do workshops and I have like, you know, on my own, but I do have um, uh, like to design the grown-ups, like design and art students and uh, they are very focused and they want to, you know, they want to do this. This, this is why they go to the school to learn. But then I go to out to school with younger kids and they didn't really ask me to come there. Maybe their teacher did and, and they get kind of, wow, is this, uh, why do we do this? And they have great questions, like philosophical questions that I like to, uh, that is very well, interesting discussing with kids. Uh, and of more than not, they do enjoy the process. And I, I I do work for myself in my own work. I focus on the process, not on the result. And I try to teach that the process is uh, the main part. So if I do commission work, if I do something for a client, I don't, I don't say, oh, wait, don't, don't, don't think about the result. I have to, you know, I have to make a good result. That's what counts if I get a client. But if I just do artwork for me, like these artist books and Every, every day work I do, like the daily work, I focus more on the process than on the result. So this is uh, what I like to teach. So those who are naughty or rebels, they kind of uh, like the structure, especially the rebels. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. So, uh, artists, I get lots of ins inspiration for them and I hope I get give some inspiration to them as well, for, to all my students, but more important, it's always kind of, you have to have a beginner's mindset. But then when you, when you know the craft or get to know the craft, if you kind of painting, you want to learn something, then uh, you know what is good and what is bad, like technical, and there's a gap. Yeah. So you have the beginner's mindset and then uh, it's, uh, when you know, know, get knowledge, there's a gap because you don't have the tools to do that yet. So I try to keep the beginner's mindset and that's why I always try to explore like different book structures because I never done anything or folded anything before. Maybe try a new technique so you can keep that fresh like this is interesting and then try to not be too hard on yourself if it's not the way you thought it would be and try to be open-minded uh, to the, the gap. That, that's the process. The gap is how you, every failure is kind of a step, not as much a failure, but uh, many of us think of it as a, as a failure. And uh, if we think of it more like steps or a process, it's easier for the mind to keep going. If, you, if, it, it's, yeah, if, if it's good for you, yeah. if it's good for you, yeah, if you feel good, but it, you feel disappointed or a failure, it's uh, maybe try to focus more on the process. and. The beginners might but failure, failures might be some advantages too. I mean, we can learn some good things from our failures. Yeah, but it's a hard thing to teach because it's a hard thing yeah, to right. do. Uh, and I mean, this is the struggle. We are, this is why it's not that easy. <laughs> this is why I have to trick myself, why we all have to trick ourselves to think. So sometimes I'm just put the timer on 15 minutes and then that's it. I, when 15 minutes are gone and the, the artwork is done or I have to like give myself, uh, I only can use blue and, and pink. So I kind yeah. of put limitations, which means I get freer in the expectation. I can always like blame, oh, I didn't have the right tool. So it feels nicer for me to kind of just start working. He says, I like to work out outside because you can't bring your whole, every art supply you have, you have to kind of choose two or three pens if you're gonna do something outside. So this, um, th this limitation, I think is good for, the, for your head to like accept that this is what you got out of this time and with these supplies. So I-, I Yeah, I also totally agree with you about this topic, so. Also, all your life, you lived in Sweden, right? Yeah, I did. Have you ever thought to move to another country or city like 
Berlin, London, or Vienna, for example. <laughs> yeah. So I've been to I've been to London. Uh, me and my uh, a friend went to London. We stayed there for kind of a, a year, and I. W- been to Madrid for some time, and um, but I never been to Vienna though. I want to go next year. Oh, please weekend. visit! Yeah. Visit to Vienna. Yes. And Istanbul. Yeah. So, <laughs> where do you are you? Do you live in Istanbul now, or do you live in Vienna? I live in between. Uh, six months in Istanbul, six months in Vienna. Oh, that's so. Great. Also, fans in started in Istanbul in mm. 2016. Oh, okay. We will bring in this event to Vienna. Oh, okay. So next year we bring it to my hometown in Sweden. Then. Yeah, why not? Yeah. <laughs> we can bring our event to there too. Why not? Yeah. There is some possibility. Yeah. <laughs> can you see in the window that the sun is still up? Yeah, there is so yeah. much light. Yeah. So wow. this is uh, uh, it's really nice where I live in the summer because the sun never really goes down. Uh, so, uh, but in the winter with the sun never comes up so i would love to yeah live in istanbul for isn't it a bit str- struggle with that light with that darkness yeah the darkness is horrible it's horrible mm, yeah. i can imagine how, how is the effect of sweden on your art and illustration is there any any big effect for your think, production yeah. so yeah I, when i grew up i didn't think so but there wasn't much to do. As I said, I live in the north of Sweden, in a small town. Uh, so all we did were kind of draw and when we didn't go to school. So all we did was drawing and dancing and kind of doing things like that. I think it, and it was before internet. So I grew up, I was a kid before internet. So we didn't have internet. And I think that maybe also helped just exploring art and building stuff outside and you know making stuff it wasn't always just collecting stones you know we we didn't know what to do we were just collecting and building stuff and drawing and dancing and doing stuff like that so yeah might have been and then and then you met with comics yeah so then i went to art school and i uh, kind of got into comics generally how how do you describe your illustrations and zines as style and content? Uh, well, I usually work with a subject that I dive into or I do a memory or some kind of poetry. I would say more poetry than a, because it's often not very long. So when I write a story, it's a short story, short story or poetry or something. Uh, so, and I like to work with uh, recycled material, so that affects the aesthetic, I guess. So I like to use, uh, reuse um, papers, maybe that I already used, or maybe that I didn't, maybe I just reuse them, or like this, you know, just this book yeah. where I just pulled stuff off, and this is a... Um, sketchbook also with uh, and then i just you know i got it yeah it looks pretty pretty nice yeah wow so this is uh, not something i bought it's just something i got and my friends give me stuff <laughs> i have nice friends uh-huh, wow. <laughs> so, so they give me leftover art supplies um, especially paper paper are really expensive i don't really even know where to start selling artist books like there's just one copy so but i'm happy to be at your fair <laughs> your festival so yeah <laughs> thank you by the way uh, i just wonder about fans in sweden how, how is that art funds is there any support from the government yes it is i'm on, on i'm on a scholarship right now so, oh, nice. yeah cool. so and and i was thinking that you can all you can also uh, apply for money to kind of uh, do events like this fair or festival if if we do a collaboration or something. I think there's money to, you know, just to get a place or join a place or, <laughs> you know, get get somewhere. 
So that's a possibility. Yeah. I just wrote lots of questions to you. So I just want to ask about that one. So how is the independent publishing and zine scene in Sweden? Is there any uh, good zine or art book festivals in there? We have Comic Con, you know, like the rest of the world. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So in Stockholm and yes, we have some uh, festivals and in, in my hometown, we have Litfest, which is for literature in festival uh, for all kinds of text based artwork. So, oh, yeah. yeah. Cool. So, uh, and, but it's not too big. Uh, like this, uh, I mean, it's small in all the words. It gets, once you get into the world, you realize that this is kind of, people don't, like common people don't just, oh, I'm going to go to a comic store and I'm going to buy a scene from, you know. So I think it's more people sell their scenes on their websites more than at festivals and fairs now, more than now than before, I guess. Yeah, also after Corona, we just started to work on the internet yeah. more than before, <laughs> so, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, I know. So what's your future projects and plans? Uh, so right now I'm actually working uh, with an author for a kid's book. So this is what I get my art scholarships for. So I'm doing more of a traditional book with her, Erika Dahlgren. Uh, She's a journalist from the beginning, but she also an author. And, and um, well, I have a few more days of vacation and then I go back to my teaching job. So, uh, and I plan to, you know, just this daily art, I guess. And also I have my comic, weekly comic over at the Old Nun Out where I always try to yeah. kind of summon up the week, how it was. It's not funny. It's just, you know, how the week was that week. So, uh, and I don't know. I have some anxiety to get to, for the summer to end. So I'm not too focused just. I just feel the anxiety that the summer is almost over for me. So, so now I have some exhibitions plans also. So in September, October Perfect. doing an exhibition and in after the winter like next spring I, I, it's another ex expedition but so looking forward to that but right now I'm just trying to accept that the summer vacation is over so. yeah one more question what, what's your favorite podcast movie or book how about your inspiration sources well, what do you offer us I wish I could say something really like this is so I made, actually I made this, uh, this one I made because everybody is always have this great, you know, cultural, high cultural, everybody was, uh, this is what I did. I always feel like I, uh, I'm not looking at the high quality stuff. Like, <laughs> so, so this is when, uh, uh, this is when I look at the Netflix and everybody. Netflix. Yes. And everybody was looking at Stranger Things. And I didn't like that as much as I liked Lucifer. Have you seen that? Well, it's a real bad yeah, show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's really It bad. really looks nice. <laughs> so, so, yeah. I like so, your concept, by the way. <laughs> yeah. So, no, but... Uh, so, you are a storyteller. I like right now on podcast. Uh, if you haven't uh, heard that, it's a real nice... Uh, podcast and they kind of break down storytelling in every kind of uh, art uh, form. If you're a dancer or if you do films or if you do comics, uh, but uh, mostly comics and films, animations and stuff. So, yeah. so that's my tip for podcasts. And like, I also, when I do like watch series, I kind of don't want to think too much. I just want to see, you know, relax and watch stupid things. Like I, j I can watch my <laughs> phone at the same time. And also right now, oh, sorry, I'm just going. So right now, this summer, 
um, uh, reading this, you know, the this uh, Walking Dead. Uh, ah, yeah. Graphic novel. So I don't know. Have you mm -hmm. seen Walking Dead? So this is. No, uh, no, I haven't seen that. Yeah. No. So this is just, you know, it's real thick. So. <laughs> so wow. this is one. Um, it looks pretty cool. Yeah, you should. It's, I would uh, like to have that book too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, it's exactly as the um, Walking Dead. So I'm into zombies and, you know, all this stupid stuff. <laughs> I also really want to ask about this one. Actually, you, you were talking about this topic before, but how do you distribute your zines? You just told that mostly yeah. you are selling on the internet, so, but is there any uh, bookstores that you, you spread your zines or work? Not my artist books. I don't know. I, but, you know, the scene when the comic scenes and stuff I do through Instagram, like my shop in Instagram, I'm sold out right now. Uh, so, but great, uh, great yeah. news. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I have to do another. I, I call that more a fun scene. You know, I put stuff together that's that I like most from the year. So every year, like for Christmas, I put together a fun scene of the best of the year. So I people like to buy before Christmas, I guess, to give us gifts uh, and. Uh, like books that I illustrated and uh, that I don't, uh, I'm not the author. Uh, that's more in bookstores and stuff. And I don't have like, uh, yeah. So this, then I get paid just to illustrate and I don't have much to do with, with the books after they're done. So yeah, it's yeah. different. So I don't really sure. have a good way to, to distribute, maybe I should learn more about that. DIY yeah. is always yeah. one of the good methods to figure out this kind of distributing. Yeah. Or you can just work with some distro. There is lots of Zin distro in United States and Europe. Yeah. So maybe you can just contact with them. Yeah, great tip, thank you. You're yeah. welcome. DM me afterwards, if you have any questions that you want to just DM me at Instagram account. So I'm happy to yeah. answer if I can. I don't know every answer, but if I can. And also please follow Instagram.com slash Frida underscore Hamar. And also Instagram.com <laughs> slash Fanzinist Vienna. Thanks for giving your time for this talk. Yeah, it was really nice to see you virtually. <laughs> Yeah, you too. Thanks everyone for watching our conversation and please keep going on to <laughs> follow us. Keep Have going. Nice evening.